Hello, my wonderful viewers, and welcome to another episode of Betty Adams Over Analyzes. Today we are going to look at a wonderful trope in science fiction. The trope is a variation of the found family trope that focuses on a very specific type of father figure. Granted, this trope has been around a lot longer than rocket ships and ray guns, but I want to focus on that outgrowth of it that started with the birth of humanity's dream of exploring the cosmos. Here you have a robot created for a very specific purpose. Some are created to kill and hunt, some are created to heal and bring peace, some are created to defend the innocent, but all are put into a situation far outside of their original parameters. They have been separated from their creators either by death or by distance. They have, by choice or programming, accepted the care and responsibility of a young human. There are adventures, then the robot is faced with a choice, a turning point where they have to act in a situation that is well outside of their programming parameters. There is no creator to give them orders. They have not faced the situation before. The fate of at least one human, if not the world itself, hangs in the balance. And here is the wonderful thing about this trope. It isn't their grand ideals that save the day. It's not their sentiments or their feelings. It's not even their fantastic power. It is the dozens, if not hundreds, in some cases, thousands upon thousands of small decisions that they have made over the course of their lives that we are allowed to see. This is not an unprecedented story. This is the kind of story that was told by Tolkien, Lewis, and MacDonald before them. The theme is a hero born not of a single moment of sacrifice or of one great victory. Rather, these heroes are born of the necessary struggle to survive and thrive in a life that we share with others. The nature of the cinematic presentation means that their heroism is finally illustrated in one final moment, but significant is the countless tiny choices that led their life to that point. These are the top five robot dads of modern science fiction. Plus an extra two honorable mentions. Note, I have excluded robots like the Transformers who are simply people with mechanical bodies. They come with their own emotions and bonding capacity and their own morals, so they don't fit the list of a machine growing, of a machine growing heart. First, let's start with the honorable mentions. These two made the list because they too faced down a dire threat outside of their programming. They too were able to achieve victory because of their dedication to the simple small acts of duty, love, and service that held the world that hold the world together. However, they never accepted the care of a young human. The story is about the robot's own personal journey to self-awareness. These are cool robot stories. They are heroes, but they are not robots. The first honorable mention is Wally. This plucky little bot was given a task, the impossible task of cleaning up the Earth after it was deliberately sabotaged by the massive, by and large, super corporation. This little bot goes about his assigned task for 700 years, dutifully cleaning up the remains of humanity. He follows his orders to the best of his abilities, and it is this very obedience that eventually gives rise to his awareness. He must exercise his mind constantly and eventually invent new ways of acting and living in order to fulfill his duty. This gives him a broader scope of understanding his duty. Then he gets the chance to fall in love, save his creators, and begin a new world. The only reason he is not on this list is that he never takes one specific human child under his wing to nurture and protect. This story is very much about Wally. On an interesting side note, the captain of this ship is an odd mirror of Wally. Where Wally had an impossibly large duty, the captain had an unbe unbelievably small duty. However, just like Wally, the captain fought and did his best to perform the duty in the face of the active opposition of the ship's AI. When the moment of trial came, the captain was able to react and fulfill his ultimate duty, thanks in no small, small part to that lifetime of striving, no matter how weak and pathetic his striving appeared next to Wally's constant battle. The second honorable mention goes to Johnny Five from Short Circuit. This one actually meets most of the criteria. Johnny Five was a war machine that existed for the purpose of killing. He suffered a lightning strike and went rogue. He meets up with an adult human, however, and they have various adventures while establishing Johnny Five as a person. During this time of character growth, the essential lessons Johnny Five learns are ones of service. The first chance he has to help his human friends, he does to the best of his ability. His ability is small, but he still tries to use it to delightfully comedic results. However, he never takes on a child to care for, and is very much a child himself from the get-go to end, so he misses out on the father aspect of the equation. Now, let's jump into the list of the top five robot dads in modern science fiction. All of the examples on the list fall into the trope category of a boy and his ex. Beginning the list at number five, we have the Brave Tone, Bravestone 12 Exclusive Edition Alpha Mech from Nickelodeon's Glitch Text. The boy in this, equation, in this equation is Hector Five's Knives. He is the protagonist whose parents have apparently died off screen of being parents of an animated protagonist. Fives is sent on a training mission and discovers they damaged Alpha deep in a cave. 
Alpha is more of your traditional robot. He is large with an industrial look over a gorilla-like frame. He has steel plating and is held together with bolts and rivets. He has a little in the way of decoration and only sports a single alpha symbol on one shoulder. His face is a globe with a single flexible line to express emotion. However, that and his body language provide more than enough cues to bond with him emotionally. He clearly has a goal of his own, but once that is achieved, he immediately starts helping the boy out. Now, Alpha has a head start on the others. The Alpha mech was clearly designed for service. He was built... His built-in controls clearly were clearly meant to be manipulated by a human controller. In the course of their adventures, he freely offers his service to the boy. One might say that the robot had no choice, but he had enough agency to not only deny direct orders, but to actively argue with the boy before offering his help. Through the Brave Stone's kindness and selfless service, the robot helps the boy grow and become something more of a man than he was before the interna interaction. The boy loses something of his callous lack of empathy for the softer emotions of his friends. When all is said and done, the robot goes home with the boy. Alpha really deserved a higher place on the list, but he was only there for part of one episode in a 10 episode series, and as he was created to serve, the journey towards heroism was an easier path for him. That puts him in fifth place until we can get more of him. Coming in at number four, we have the fan-beloved Robot Robinson from Netflix's 2018 version of Lost in Space. Here we have a warrior maid, even if we don't know by whom or for what. This robot is actually an alien from another world, and that leaves his past a mystery. The boy in the equation is Will Robinson. Will finds the robot and saves its life. The robot seems to be grateful at first and seems to bond with the boy. They become friends and the robot saves the boy's life several times. However, the show takes its time to showcase the dozens of tiny acts of service and kindness the robot performs with growing frequency and confidence. The show illustrates this by contrasting this with the actions of the boy's near selfless father and various selfish and self-serving characters. You can watch robot slowly blossoming maturity mirrored in the children around him as well. You see, children are inherently selfish. They want their own ends and can't see past the means they want to take to those ends. When we say someone has become a man or has become a woman, what we often mean is that they have moved past this childish selfishness and are, and are actively caring for others now. What do the terms man-child or woman-child mean except inexcusably selfish and self-centered behavior? What does it mean that she is such a little woman or he was a man by the time he was 15? These are phrases we often hear of people raised in hard times. Boys and girls who are forced to mature too quickly and in the end shed their childish self-centeredness, perhaps too fast for their own good. In the story of Robot Robinson's journey to maturity and heroism, there are plot twists and some well-written heartbreak. And suddenly in the story, his motivations are revealed to be far more complex than a strict code of obedience to whatever master wakes him. What is clear, though, is that he still loves the boy. The boy still loves him, but nothing else can be clear until season three drops. <sighs> if you're watching, if you're listening to this after season three has dropped, lucky you. This one, again, would be higher on the list, but the robot in this case is nearly as mentally young as the boy, and both of them are being fathered in turn by the boy's actual father, subtracting a bit from the dad part of the equation. Coming in at number three is Baymax from Big Hero 6. The boy is, of course, an orphan. This is the house of parent murdering mouse, after all. Now, like Alpha, Baymax has a head start on his hero's journey. He was created from nothing to serve individual humans to the best of his ability. At no point does he have to fight his core programming. However, he shows a near genius level of reasoning in the way that he fearlessly steps out of anything that might be considered medical aid to bring Hero back to mental health. Baymax tenderly takes care of his boy Hero, even seeing to Hero's moral growth and keeping Hero from doing things that he'd regret. Baymax is strong, tender, and caring, and the only reason he isn't number one adoptive robot dad is that he had, had this massive head start of having that as his programming starting point. He had instructions from Tadashi, and he followed them to the letter, even if he had to invent a few new letters and possibly a whole other alphabet to do it. The top two robot dads had to make hard choices to stay on their paths. There was nothing so easily laid out for them. Number two is the Iron Giant from the movie, of course, The Iron Giant. The boy is the red-headed fatherless Holgarth. 
Like the first two, the Iron Giant is a warrior. He was built as a defense platform and falls to Earth as an alien. Unlike Baymax and our number one dad bot, the Iron Giant seems to have true emotions that help to motivate his actions. Given that we know nothing about his creators, we don't know if these emotions were deliberately programmed into him, or if emotions are simply an unavoidable side effect of having a mind intelligent enough to analyze a combat situation and react to it without instructions. Whichever way that plot rolls, the Iron Giant bonds with Hogarth and takes it on himself to protect him. Again, we see the story told. The Iron Giant makes a hundred tiny choices. Each choice shapes the next and shapes the being doing the choosing. When the time comes for the flying self-sacrifice, it is really the only logical choice for him from the point of view of the audience. We have seen him choosing to protect Hogarth in every other way. All of his choices have led him here. And drumroll, please! Number one is an old classic, the Cyberdyne Systems Model 101 or our beloved T-800 from Terminator 2 Judgment Day. What is there to say? Arnold found himself the perfect role for this movie. Unlike the Iron Giant, the T-800 has no emotions to help him along his path to making the right choice, no sentiments to drive him forward. He wasn't programmed from universal kindness like Baymax. He wasn't the creation of an advanced alien race like Robot Robinson presumably is. He wasn't even designed to be a friendly pet like the Alpha Mech. He was programmed to be a soldier, to fulfill his duty. Skynet had given him his duty first, to hunt down the humans in their lairs and kill them there. He had no emotions, only information and logic. He is then captured and reprogrammed with new orders, to protect the life of an individual, John Connor. The focused and embittered humans of the future didn't think to program him with a larger view of protecting all life. They just wanted their hero to make it until such a time as he was of service to them. And again, the T-800 does not have emotions. He can neither sympathize nor empathize with the sentiments he observes in John and Sarah. He has facts and logic. Using these, however, he comes to the conclusion that life is something to be protected, and, he, and that he as a soldier has a duty to protect it at all costs. Why he comes to this, well, you have to watch the movie to figure that out. But one thing that I've kind of been pondering is that originally Skynet was created to protect humanity. And this might have been the T-800 reverting to the actual first orders of Skynet, the first service that Skynet was called to, to perform. I think that facet of the T-800 story was, however, was what really earned him the top slot on this list. In so much science fiction, the world is presented as such that without emotions to combat logic, there can be no compassion. And yet the T-800 had no emotions, but he and ultimately he found compassion service to another, an ultimate self-sacrifice to be in themselves perfectly logical in the world that he was in. And this, I just cannot tell you how much this makes me happy. When I was a child and I watched T2 for the first time when my older sister snuck it in when my parents were gone, it really, really, really stuck with me in a way that the other genre movies of the time didn't. And I think that as I aged and as I saw how riddled science fiction was with this concept that logic and emotion are in combat with each other for the heart of the human race rather than serving each other and in consort, I just really appreciated this. So that's it, folks. My personal top five favorite found family robot dads from modern science fiction. Am I missing anyone? Would you have arranged the list differently? Leave a like below if you agree and leave a comment stripping my opinion like a rusty bolt if you disagree. Hit that subscribe button and share the video if you want to see more like it. Check out my links for some school's Teespring merch. I apologize for the audio quality. The new kitten is... Uh, objecting to her new living arrangements and wants to come in and help me make the video. Well, so peace out, my wonderful viewers.